Welcome back and thank you for watching part 4 of Python for PL SQL developers. In the first part of the series we talked about Python as a general language, what are the, the basic syntax, what are the different operators, how do you define a variable. Actually if you remember there is nothing called defining a variable. When you assign the value to the variable that time the variable is created and you saw all that in the first module. In the second module we went through a little bit deeper conditional statement like if um, while loop etc and conditions and loops that was the, the focus of the second uh, part of the series in the third part we talked about collections and such as list dict dictionaries and uh, stru structures etc which is uh, like an array in pl sql and python being a data oriented language and most likely you are interested in python because you want to do some data manipulations so the collections are extremely important which by the way are called sequences in python very different from oracle sequences so we saw that as well in python 3 in part 4 we jump onto something more creating repeatable executable functions uh, such as functions and procedures in pl sql um, that's obviously the you, you have created some utilities and uh, you want to put the utilities into practice without reinventing the wheel every time. So how do you create the functions? How do you create? How do you store the functions inside uh, Python, which is called a module? And we'll also see file handling operations. Because at the end of the day, you want to do some data manipulation, which by which might come in some form of files, and uh, you will see how to read, write to the files, how do you manipulate the files, how do you store the data from the files in memory for faster manipulations, and all that. So that brings us to part four. Without further ado, let's jump on to part four of the series. All right. So functions in PL SQL and stored procedures. This is how a function look like. Function, function name, you have a certain parameter in data type and uh, that's what you have to give. And then at the end you have to return something. Let me just put a little uh, cursor here. Uh, pointer options is a ledger pointer there you go so it's a it's a return data type what is what does it return like integer var char etc then if you have any local variables to define you can define it right after the is or add statement then you put a begin then you put a function code at the end of the line of the function here it has to return some variable back to the calling uh, session this is the basic type of a function in PL SQL you have a similar one for procedures in PL SQL. The only difference is that in procedure, it does not return anything. Well, there could be an out parameter, but it's not the same thing as uh, returning something. That's basically the only difference. In Python, there is no difference between fun functions and procedures. Everything is called a function. And this is the basic syntax of a function. You create the function not using the word function but by def that stands for define you have a function name a certain parameters etc and return something very similar so if you look at the syntax it's not all that different but let's just dissect the syntax a little bit more and see how it's different once again this is the basic syntax of a def function definition in python this is a an example of a, of a function definition in python so let's dissect it one by one First, the def, the define, that uh, indicates the start of the function, then the name of the function itself, then you have parameters p1 and p2. Remember one thing is very, very different, the one thing is different from this and PL SQL is that C in Python, you do not put the data type of the parameters. That's an interesting thing. You do not define what the data type of the parameters are. So you can basically take, you can pass anything because uh, in one uh, invocation of the function you can pass an integer in another invocation of the same function you can pass a, of a string and all that thing you want there is no restriction about that that's an interesting difference from pl sql at the end you also have a colon which ends uh, marks the end of the function definition just like many other things in python that end with colon remember if statement the end of the if statement is nothing but a colon. The end of the loops is also a colon. So similarly, function definitions also end in the colon here. And um, 
again there is no mention of the return data type in uh, fun fun function at all um, remember that in function is can return something or may not return something but while defining the function you do not have to specify up front if it returns something or not and if it doesn't if it does then what kind of data type it, it, it returns unlike PL SQL then um, once you define that, you put the function code as indented block after that. Whatever is indented in that, it uh, is assumed to be function code right here. So in this case, this from here to here is all same function code called get difference. And uh, there is no begin and end. This is just like other, other structures in Python. Remember the if loop, I'm sorry, if condition, if something, then anything in that if will be as it is indented. Uh, similarly, while loop, uh, everything is in that, that defines how it's indented. And um, then are, it returns something, return v1 in this case. It, in, at the, in that way, it is very similar to PLSQL. And uh, you can see that I put a print v1 statement. Return has to be the last statement in a function. Therefore, this print v1, even though is not syntactically incorrect, it is not going to ever exe get executed. So put that in mind, the return has to be the last one, which is also very similar in PL SQL, nothing different. This, uh, I deliberately used the word print outside the line there to show you that is not indented with the rest of the, the, the function code. Therefore, it is not going to be executed as a part of the function. So when you invoke the function, that print outside will not be executed. Um, when you put this around the entire code block, at that time the function is defined, but the print outside is printed anyway. So this is important to understand and then keep that in mind, what the function is, all that. Okay, so having said that, let's just go through some simple functions and see how they actually work. As in the past, other parts of the series, I have two windows here. The left one is SQL plus. Let me just uh, make sure that I clear a clear answer. And the right one is Python. And just to make the difference clear, I have put the Python one as black and white, and the SQL plus one um, blue. I'm sorry, yellow on uh, black. Just to make the difference. So let's say go to the first one, which is very important for us, and to see that the how we can do that. So let's define a very very simple function. Let me get this one. Uh, sorry, not this, this one. Let me say a very simple function in PL SQL. This is a very simple function called calculate interest. In this case, I am passing two parameters, P principal, P interest rate, and I am returning here return. Um, I'm, not, I'm not returning anything. Therefore, it's a procedure. So, uh, simple thing, passing two parameters and uh, displaying the new principal is this. Very simple thing. Um, just to keep in one thing mind, I have uh, declared this variables over here in the same, it's, it's not the classic PLSQL uh, uh, structure or the style of declaring variables. I usually do P underscore something or um, or V underscore something, etc. This is the Python kind of scripting, you know, the camel cause they call it, uh, just to keep in syn the syntax uh, as consistent as possible. So in this case, if I have this function, here I'm calling this function begin, calculate end, and then that's what uh, it's supposed to, I think. Let me see what happens if we execute it. Uh, new principle is 110, which is simple. I passed uh, 10 to 12, 10, 10, I'm um, sorry, 100 is principal and 10 as interest rate. I got that. Let's see if I want, if you write the exact same uh, function, um, the procedure in Python, how do I do that? I remember that def etc. So that's I have already written that, and that is py1 txt. This is how the Python function looks like. Def my the thing of the first one that's for define in the function name p principal p interest rate. Remember, you do not put the data types in in, in fun pi, uh, parameters in Python. Therefore, it returns. Uh, you don't need to put anything here. Then the new principal is a variable I've defined here, equal to p principal and that, and print the new principal is so and so. You do not. This particular function doesn't have to return anything. That's why there's no return statement. Then at the end, I put calc interest 
and that's the function name with this this is how you call the function as well let's see that then uh, how do I execute this and to do this I have to call Python sorry my fault and new principle is so and so that's it so let's examine the syntax in PL SQL right here on your left side uh, let me just highlight this one and the syntax in Python all right although you can always argue I think that uh, pretty similar Python is a little less uh, this is a little more cryptic little less verbose um, uh, jury is out on exactly which one is better I personally prefer this begin and end all that makes it clearer but then again maybe because I'm so much used to PL SQL it kind of got used to I got used to it so anyway up in Python you do not do that make sure you understand this indentation right here is the one that indicates if it is part of the function or not part of the function begin and end doesn't exist in Python all right so this is the first uh, introduction to Python sometimes you do not want to pass any parameters to the functions over here for example in P principal P interest rate you may want to keep the P interest rate the parameter here as a default so for example 5% if the user passes something good then you use it if the user does not pass anything in the in that parameter you want to assume it is 5 how do you do this actually very simple you generally do it this way this is how the function looks like this is how you put define the default parameter p interest rate number equal the assignment operator which is colon equal to 5 if you do this your principal is 105 because I see that what I did here I called calc int 100 I did not pass the second parameter which is the interest rate therefore the procedure assumed it's 5 and it returned me 105 what's the equivalent in Python actually is surprisingly similar so let's take a look at how that, that looks like it's exactly same way see that here P interest rate equal to 5 that's interesting thing so this is the it's the same way as PL SQL in P, but remember in PL SQL the assignment operator is colon equal to in Python it is simply equal to and therefore that's all we used in PL SQL we use by a colon equal to right here we use in Python simply equal to so I don't see that much of a difference there that's a default value of the parameter if I want to execute it just to make sure it does there you go 105 very simple thing and got that as well but having said that there is another very interesting and very useful feature in Python which is um, um, uh, if you want to uh, let's say you want to have a string variable in that case you can do that as well this is how it the string variable is suppose um, suppose you want to find out here um, if um, suppose you want to find out here what's of the, the the string uh, the account type is called string variable simply put like uh, double quotes checking and etc you can also put JP bonus uh, dot, uh, the, the boolean variables and and so on and so forth so it's kind of interesting to see that you can do all those things without uh, uh, just not restricted to only integer because you do not pass anything like a, a, a you don't define what kind of parameter it is the only way Python knows what parameter is going to be passed as default is what you pass here okay all right so this is good to know that but um, one of the very very uh, powerful features of Python is that you don't have to have a constant or a literal for this by default value so for example in let's go back to here this is a PLSQL program um, some something like this uh, PL3 you want this the, the pre interest three uh, number here uh, what's going on here I don't have my fault suppose you want something like this you have a default interest rate and uh, 
the p interest rate instead of putting a, a specific uh, constant here you want to define a variable which will take the value from the variable defined earlier in plsql that's not possible you can't do that there's no way it has to be a constant a literal if you force it you'll see what happens here so pl4 say i want to force something like this is going to say well expecting encountered symbol or equal to let's count something it's, it's a syntax error you cannot use something some structure like this but sometimes it actually might be helpful to put a structure like that because you don't want to know in advance uh, what the default value should be that should be derived as the time comes when the def function is declared perhaps based on certain conditions that's actually extremely uh, easy in python so let's see how that looks like py4 this is how it looks like let me just uh, maybe i just put it in the notepad so you can see clearly this is how it looks like this is an interesting thing look at this p principal p interest rate equal to default interest rate and default interest is something as defined earlier so new principal is so and so that's it let's just make sure that actually runs successfully python four yep it does so this is actually a very useful feature in python which is not uh, possible in pl sql however i want to stress one thing is that this variable let me just open up this thing here this variable def interest rate right here this is taken into account whenever in the, the whenever the function is called for the first time whatever the value of the def interest rate at that time was that time was it will be taken if you change the default interest rate later on it would not be uh, the, the function will not take it let's illustrate that by another example let me see one thing here for it let's say this this simple function here i have defined a default interest rate equal to five then i have a calculated interest rate right here whereas the p interest rate is default interest rate later on i didn't call this function yet i changed the default interest rate right here you can see then i call the function what do you think will happen will the function take that the interest rate as uh, uh, five or ten well let's take a look what happens here it took five why let's take another example here it took five because when you define the function here at that time this default interest rate was five so even though you change it afterwards to 10 doesn't matter the function is stuck with 5 so it's something it's not exactly like a variable it might be close to something like a pre-processing uh, variable in, P in in plsql something very similar to that one so you can do that we call it a variable um, the, 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 the default value doesn't have to be a literal or a constant it can be a variable let's see one more thing called positional parameters in this case i have a p principal p interest rate when you call this function i mean the procedure in pl sql you have to pass the parameters in that sequence principal and then interest rate not always if you want to reverse it for example you want to pass interest rate first and then the principal what do you do you can simply do that by something called uh, the this uh, the positional parameters so let's take a look at the example of how the positional parameter is and that will help us three so this is how a positional parameter looks like so as exact same function but I do do this way calculate P interest rate equal to greater than that's the uh, parameter assignment uh, operator in uh, PL SQL in Python same some same concept applies as well so let me see PL3 this is something in Python that is called same way it's called p interest rate right here so this i'm sorry equal to sign which is uh, the equivalent here in in pi pl sql is let me get this the equivalent of equal to a greater than in python it is simply equal to very simple thing let me see if it runs of course it will run um right here of course oh, sorry my fault new principle is 115 
so this is how actually uh, this this works let me show you one more time before I, we close it equal to sign here that's how you assign uh, the variables in any order you want all positional variables here and uh, not anything else uh, sometimes you may have used something called null variable remember that suppose you have this calculate interest here you have defined the variable I mean you define the default value 5 but occasionally you want to do some calculation based on it for example if the user passed a value fine you don't want to do anything if a user did not pass a value in that case of course you won't take a default variable how do you know a default user passed the value or not so what happens is generally you can you can know if a user passed the value or not by assigning a special variable called null so this is how it looks like this is how the null looks like you can say null variable so then based on that you can say if p interest rate is null then you can define if interest rate if it is not null that means the user passed some specific value then of course you want to keep the respect that value so this is something might be very useful in some programming things so what is the equivalent of null in python we have actually used that sometime in the past if you remember and that was none if you remember that so then let's see how that actually looks like to be this is how it looks like savings etc if p interest rate equal to none and i also defined here as none that means if i don't specify anything then i will get this none and if i specify something it will not be none it will be something else so let's look at this program here this code then i will show you i have called this function three different times first one without a parameter without the second parameter which is p interest rate in that case python will take none and it will do something let's take let's take a look at that what exactly how it executes it to be all right the first one it executed it took 100 as a principal and it took uh, p interest rate as none and the account type was savings because default is savings if it is none then you got p account type is savings yep that's this the code block is right now p interest rate equal to none yes it's exactly none then the v interest is equal to 10 and as a result of that the new principal became 10 um, i'm 10 percent interest rate the next one i passed 100 as a principal and 20 as the second parameter which is interest rate in that case p interest rate is not non anymore it's 20. so in that case and the account type equal to i left it so it will be savings so it will go to this block no doubt then if p interest rate equal to none that's not going to happen this time because i actually passed a value 20. therefore it will go into else and that case v interest rate which is the variable interest rate type defined here that will be p interest rate which is 20. so then cast the v interest equal to 20 and this also not come here then the p principal is 20 percent and therefore the new principal becomes 120. the third one calculate interest i put past the parameter here 100 see that i don't have i did not pass the p interest rate parameter in this case and i pass the account types explicitly at checking in that case in the code it will go to if p account type equal to savings no it's not it will go to the else block in the, after the else block it will say if p interest rate equal to none which is true because by default it's none in that case v interest rate equal to five and that's about it so in that case the new principle here becomes 105 this is how we can define that uh, the principle uh, the, the default value if you want to do it null you can do how you, how we can do that in python so far we talked about only stored procedures which you do not return something let's see something that actually return in pl sql which is obviously as you know are called functions so this is how the functions look like let me say a very simple functions declare function get interest rate return number etc all the thing it's a very simple thing how do we define the exact same thing in python it's actually very very simple just do this p1 
by 5. The same function over here. See the def, obviously, the get interest rate, p account type. If account type equal to saving, then do this thing. Then at the end, we say return this one. Now, let's understand that if here, this return, is it part of this if condition? It's not. Why not? Because it's indented at the same level as if here. Therefore, it's not part of the if condition. It's part of the function definition here and return v interest rate right here. So, if I execute this function, if I execute this procedure, for example, it gives you interest rate 10, interest rate 5, interest rate is equal to 15. And if I execute this one, 10, 5, and 15 as well. So let's take a little pause here to see the similarities on these two statements. As you can see, they're actually quite similar. The only difference is in the case statement over here, there is no case statement equivalent in Python. That's why you had to resort to if, elif, etc. But the, the concept is pretty much same. So here, I return something, return v rate, it was return interest rate. Very simple thing. You got that. So it's not all that different. I'm, I, I, I hope you saw the similarities of both languages. Now, let me go back to one more thing is important thing called documentation. You might have seen documentation before, which is not unknown. In PL SQL, you do this forward slash, asterisk, you put some documentation, and then you forward in the asterisk and forward slash. Anything you put in between, it's going to be uh, ignored by the program as documentation. And generally, this is where you put uh, different kinds of stuff. In Python, actually, it's a little bit more powerful. Let's see how. You do the define the function name, parameter name, etc., and colon. After that, you put three uh, double quotes. Put as many lines as you want between that and put and three more double quotes. Anything between this set of three double quotes will be considered a documentation by Python. Well, what's the difference? The diff, uh, what's the difference between PLSQL then? The difference is in PLSQL, this is not really documentation. This is comment. That means ignored by PLSQL. In Python, it's not ignored. It is ignored for processing, but Python understands its documentation and therefore puts it into a special kind of variable. Actually, it's called attribute of the function. And that is called underscore, underscore, doc, and underscore, underscore after that. This special attribute stores whatever you have put inside this, in the two letter lines which is very useful when you create functions. In the future, if you want to bring up the documentation, you can do that in PLSQL. You probably have to open up the, um, the file and see what the documentation was. In Python, you can simply call this function. I'm going to call this attribute called my function dot underscore underscore doc underscore underscore, and you get everything. What is documented there? Let's take a look how that actually looks. Let me show you one I have here, which is notepad py6 see that here I put a lot of stuff here inside this then I put um, the parameter etc and I can do this and say Python py6 dot txt there you go I got this value but I didn't get this uh, documentation thing here no worries I can get that Look at this thing here. I am printing my func dot underscore underscore duck underscore underscore. So when I do this, I got back everything. You can see that here. And let me just uh, just took uh, so an example how I put it. You can see here. Everything I put in this got uh, uh, stored as a special para attribute of the function, which is a very powerful feature of Python to be used afterwards. One more thing you might be wondering about. Remember, in Python, you don't specify the data type of the parameters being passed or the data type of the parameter uh, or the return value you are getting back. So, which is maybe fine, but sometimes it might bother you. Okay, What happens if I want to know that? 
is it possible to somehow tell python what i'm passing in like integers strings and all that and i'm getting some value and, and what kind of value i'm getting back like integers and string all of that actually python allows you to do that it's called annotation and this is how you do the annotations again the define function name uh, open parenthesis parameter name generally you just stop right here and you put a comma and you put the second parameter all that instead of doing that you can put a colon and the data type of the first parameter and uh, comma parameter name colon data type of the second parameter and then is this uh, uh, hyphen forward slash and then what kind of data type it returns so here is an example define my func p1 colon interest interest is, is a not interest sorry integer and it's an integer uh, parameter this is a string parameter and it returns a string parameter so if i do this uh, my func is it takes two parameters the first one is integer second one is string and it returns a string if i ever want to find out what these things are in the future i can do print my func dot underscore underscore annotations underscore underscore just like you saw the doc uh, underscore underscore doc underscore underscore attribute a special attribute similarly underscore underscore annotations underscore underscore is a special attribute of the functions as well let's take a look how that actually looks like annotations um, let me go back here so this is how it looks like annotations so I just put annotations here as int you can see that here int int and return uh, definitely return data type is int so python there you go this is how i so if i do a print uh, annotations it returns me this value so you can so as you can see here parameter 2 is int parameter 1 is int return is int as well having said that i want to also stress one very important thing this annotation is just suggestive that means you can simply suggest to python this is what we intend to do there is no restriction whatever that python imposes by this annotation that you must follow it take for example this function in this function i have defined as int let me show you that uh, one more example you can show you that so this look at this function here here i have defined or let me see the notepad i see much better so notepad in this you can see that is int and int int and int however return is also int in this case however one thing i want to very clearly mention that annotations are merely suggestive in nature there is no restriction that python will put which is uh, which will uh, was which you have to conform to that uh, the data type for example in this case my function p1 interest and p2 string that's simply suggestive there is no restriction that you have to pass an integer to p1 and have to pass a uh, string to p2 you can change anything you want during the call itself so let's see that actually in action it might be actually much easier to do it in idle which is the interactive environment in python let me simply define a very simple function so i define a function say f1 and p1 which is int and p2 is also int and which returns uh, int and define and i don't want this anything to define in this function and for the, for the heck of it i'm creating this function so i'm just going to put pass just to show you that function now i have a different function called f1 so this is the function f1 and uh, if i want to so uh, see how i call this function and you see the annotation of the function i can do f1 dot underscore underscore annotations as you saw before there you go it shows clearly p1 uh, p1 the first parameter is int um, the second return is also int p2 is also int all three but see how i do this p1 f1 say a comma b i am passing two strings that's fine too python doesn't really care it allows me to pass it so keep in mind that annotations are not restrictions it's simply suggestive so if anybody is putting 
a, a, non, a different data type inside the function itself. There is no restriction, whatever. And uh, that kind of makes annotations not so useful. So you may want to just ignore it. But I just mentioned it here just for the sake of completeness, but it's not necessarily a great thing. Next, we talk about, let's say, global and local variables. And you, uh, what are global and local variables? Actually, this might be simple, something to show easily by an example. This is a PLSQL program. Well, it kind of long, looks long, but it's not. It's really simple if you look at it. I have a function called mmyfunc. Inside that, I return number, v1, v2, etc. The important thing to see that I have two variables, a v1, which is outside the function, and a v1 inside the function, both of them. So when in the inside the function, I put v1, assign it, p1 plus p2 which v1 do you think will be updated the v1 here or the v1 inside the function well you might say obviously it is v1 inside the function why it is obviously because it's called a local variable so when you have two variables, this is called a global variable and this is called a local variable so when you have a v1 it will only update the local variable and return the v1 so just to show an example here I put a little begin, the VMS output in outside the function, V1 equal to 10, put line, uh, V1 equal to what the value of the V1 is, and inside that output of the function is my func 20 and 30, what do you think the value will be here? It, it also puts out this call inside the function V1 equal to whatever, it, it also puts that. So let's set, look, look at that exactly what it returns. In this case we go here, PL, nine so here outside the function v1 equal to 10 inside the function v1 equal to 50 that's because i called 20 and 30 so it became 50 at that and uh, the output of the function is 50 that's what shows me and v1 the important thing is that even though that there are two variables called v1 uh, in outside and inside the function it inside the function the local variables are respected and the, the global variables are not at all required so as a result of that it's uh, it just took uh, the, the, you understand the scope of it local scope and and um, the, the global scope if you do not define a variable called v1 here suppose and instead, I yeah, just put v1 equal to p1 and p2. It would not have affected. It wouldn't have actually have it because the scope would not have been the same. So this is the scope of the of the program of the variable that is defined by this. Now in Python, there is also a global and local scope, but this becomes a slightly interesting problem in Python because remember, you do not define a variable. In this case, in PLSQL, we define v1 is a number. Here, inside the function, we also put v1 is number. So it's defined very clearly. In Python, you don't define it. So then, how does Python determine which what is the scope of a variable? This is how a Python fun equivalent Python function looks like. See here, you don't define a variable called v1. You simply call v1 equal to p1 and plus p2. When you do this, at that time, this variable gets created v1. So inside the function, etc. Written the function. Here is the function uh, global variable v1 equal to 10 and print v1 equal to v1. So uh, output of the function is so and so. So even though you don't define the function, when you create for the first time, wherever you create it for the first time, that time the scope is determined. So in this case, this is the v1 is gets created for the first time inside the function. That's why it's called local variable. Here, the global variable called v1 is defined and this gets created. That's the important part about, about scope of this one. So let's say without further ado, let's see how you can see this the same program. We saw the program in PLSQL and let's see the same program here. Um, um, PL y 9 this is how it looks like exact same uh, plsql program i'm sorry exact same Py, uh, plsql code written in python define the function my funk is this v1 equal to p1 p2 etc if i then now execute it Outside the function is 10, inside the function is 50. So there are two different variables, even though the variable is named same, v1, it's actually scope is different. And that's how it works. So, so far, so good. 
Um, in fact, the scope is the makes the variable completely independent. So they can you can even have two different data types. Take for example this one, Python. Uh, that's not Python. Say a slightly different way, the a variation of the same thing here. Here, I have p1 and p2 as parameters, but I've also defined p1 and p2 are two different variables outside the function. Am I allowed to do that? Absolutely allowed to do that. Let's see how actually that works. So you saw that now, and uh, actually I'll just also type it so you'll be able to see. Sorry, 9A. So this is how the, the, the code looks like. This is how the code looks like. And let me see. Outside the function, global is equal to V1 equal to 10. Inside the function, local V1 is 50. Out, and then you can also put global P1 and P2, hello world because that's the, that is nothing to do with what uh, variables have defined inside the function itself. The scope is different. So that kind of gives you the idea that the variables are completely independent based on the scope and whatever they are defined. This uh, scope is something you should pay attention to. The scope of the variable is determined at the time of its first appearance. Since there is no such thing called declaration of variables, because variables are declared at the time of the assignment of the values, whether a variable is local or global depends on when it was first referenced. So take, for example, this code. Actually, I'm say notepad. Oh, sorry. My fault. It's uh, not the file. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Here defined, define print v1, v2. Uh, I put another variable called v2 in p1 plus p2, etc. And and when put it here, then I have defined v1 is equal to 100. As you might see, this v1 is global, and this v1 is local, right? Let's see after we run this function. This is, I just uh, put a type here to show you that how it looks like. My fault. Um, okay. So, what do you think the output of the line will be? This is actually, this is a, a quirk of, of Python. Let's take a look here. Here, print v1 equal to v1. Remember, I didn't assign a value to v1. Python variables are created when I assign a value. If they don't get created when I reference them like a print statement or I use it to some, some other expression, that they don't get created. So in this case, the local variable called v1 was not created. So, when I do a print v1 equal to v1, how did it pick up? What did it pick up, by the way? Let's go back and see here. It picked up 100, which is the value I have defined outside. So, how did that happen? How did uh, Python pick up v1 is equal to 100, even though I didn't actually create a local variable over here? Now, this is one of the quirks of Python. It did it because we haven't defined a variable called v1 in the function at all. As a result of that, Python assumed that we actually refer to the global variable called v1. And therefore, without complaining or without giving a syntax error or anything, is without complaining that you haven't defined a variable called v1, it simply presented it. Here, v1 equal to the value of here. This is something you have to keep in mind that even though you might assume it automatically picks up a local variable, if the local variable called v1 doesn't exist, which in this case the case, Python, instead of reporting an error, simply prints the global variable if one exists, which is a little confusing sometimes and might be worth checking into. Now, what would have happened if we had defined a local variable called v1 in this case? Let's take a look at that slightly 
variable statement you can see here v1 equal to 100 which is the global variable and um, print v1 equal to v1 etc and all that thing and return v1 same thing is almost similar to what we had before the only difference is that i have a variable called v1 created before i even created the function in that case in the when the function gets executed return v1 here v1 equal to vp1 plus p2 etc this print statement over here this statement what will happen in this case will it be okay or not okay let's take a look it says local variable v1 reference before the assignment where did that happen it happened let's take a look at that this is the first one which didn't produce a problem this is the second one which produced a problem if you look at the difference here here I put a v1 equal to 100 after I have defined the function when I therefore when Python interpreted the function it simply assumed because there's nothing called v1 inside it i must have referred to a global variable and there is such a global variable exist no problem in this case however i defined a variable called v1 equal to 100 as a result of that python when i print v1 equal to v1 and i have a v1 equal to p1 plus p2 python says hey i see there is a local variable called v1 you're creating but before it gets created you are printing it here that is not allowed then how come it was allowed here? It was allowed here because we didn't, never ever defined a, a local variable called v1. Therefore, Python assumed uncomplainingly that we are referring to the global variable. In this case, we have created a local variable called v1. As a result of that, Python says, uh huh, you cannot uh, reference this variable until you actually create it. So, this print statement it has to be after the v1 then it will work fine so keep that in mind if you have a variable if I'm sorry if you do not have a variable in the name inside the function then Python will automatically assume that you are referring to the global variable of course assuming that you have it but if you have the same variable name inside the function you better create it before you reference it without that Python is going to complain about that value doesn't exist which is, uh, I would say, a little bit intricacy of, of, of uh, Python. Okay, argument array is another interesting thing about Python. Sometimes you might have seen that. Uh, let's take a simple example. I want, I, I want to create a function called min sum. I want to pass multiple numbers there, one, two, three, and it should return me the total of the three numbers. I know there's such a function already exists in Python, but let's assume that I'm going to create one myself. So min sum one, two, three. What is the problem is that I don't know while creating this function how many parameters I'm going to assume uh, is going to come. In this case, I, uh, I call, the user called it uh, with one two three, or the user could actually call using my sum one two three four. There are four arguments in this. It might go on like that. So you don't know while the function being created how many arguments will be passed to this one. So what do you do? This is an indefinite number of parameters. How do you do that in uh, PL SQL? Actually, you can't. In PL SQL, you have to know exactly how many parameters you're going to pass uh, to the server thing. Of course, you can make it a default null, so you don't have to uh, pass all the parameters, but you have to know the number of parameters. And that becomes all, also, if you, the number of parameters can go up to a certain limit, so that means your parameters here also go to that limit also. And you cannot just... Uh, um, and that becomes very very cumbersome programming because you have to rewrite each argument and then you do a uh, null so that it knows this is going to null could be expected from there. So it becomes a little confusing and uh, thing. In Python, it's actually really simple. Remember the uh, the uh, the uh, pass has pointers in in C programming. If you ever have done C programming, same thing here. What if you pass? a list of numbers not just a single number to a variable so this is how we do it define some asterisk num list in this case num list does not become a single number but becomes a list of numbers in that case you are allowed to enter as many as numbers as possible because at that time it becomes a list numbers and also once it is accepted as a list you can then iterate over it 
as many times as you want and manipulate the whole thing as a list you don't have to put such a list itself you can simply pass parenthesis and put anything in there uh, python will automatically interpret as, as the list variable here so let's see how that actually works you know, there is no such equivalent in in pl sequence i'm just going to ignore the pl sql part of it so this is how it looks like see that here define my sum num list i put a total equal to zero for i in num list remember num list is this point nothing but a list so i in num list print i is going to print the first uh, the thing and then it'll keep on iterating total plus one and uh, until it it it, uh, it goes through all the elements of the list and then adds that to the total and prints the total here so let's take a look how that looks like i'm just going to print it one more time you can see it very simple thing so if i execute it one two three total equal to six there is no restriction as to how many i can put here so this is something also maybe good for idle so here i put define say f1 asterisk num list for so so tot equal to zero for i in num list dot equal to dot plus i and he can do i don't i'll skip the print i part of it and then return dot and um, so this is the definition of the function which is good and then i'm going to say i'm just going to call this function afterwards so f1 1 2 3 f1 1 2 3 6 i can call as many times as i want anything i can pass here it will be very clear to that one so this is how i use um, the the num list parameter so that takes care of argument array the next one i want to talk about is the named argument you might have seen that some uh, applications or programs they don't necessarily ask you to enter the parameters in the same sequence they expect it they you can uh, you can enter any uh, parameter any order you want as long as you put the keyword and the value of it afterwards simple example could be the data pump export expdp and after that you can put the parameters in any order you want as long as you put the parameter name equal to the value parameter name two equal to value and so on and so forth and, and continue like that can you do something like that in plsql remember um, in plsql you can do that you can assign the parameters by something called positional parameters there is one problem though the problem is you have to know in advance exactly how many possible parameters you may need to pass and that therefore you uh, you have to create this number of parameters accordingly and put the default value to null if you don't expect somebody sometimes those parameters may not be passed which uh, may not work all the time take for example you're trying to pass a list of names and you want to see if the names are similar the keyword equal to value if you want to see if the keyword is equal to value in some cases you really can't do that you can do that easily in python by something called named argument this is how you do it define the function name asterisk asterisk word list when you do this for python will expect this argument in a dictionary format remember the dictionary which is a collection in python the difference between other collections and dictionary is that it's not ordered it has a key value pair every time so this one becomes a key value pair you can pass it and um, when you do that you can once it comes as a key value pair then you know in dictionary you can get all the keys by this attribute the, the method called keys 
and you can get that everything from there called v keys then once you get the key you can get the value of it by using this uh, notation which is uh, square brackets in that that's a v key so this word list is a key value pair or a dictionary in python so let's see how that actually works in, in real life so again, there's no equivalent of uh, if it is in uh, PLSQL at all. So I'm just not going to bother about uh, trying to do that in PLSQL. So this is how it looks like. Okay, for some reason it did not show it uh, well. So I'm just going to say type py12.txt. This is how it looks like. Suppose I want I'm writing a fun function that checks twins a word list. If the um, w equal to word list w which means the key equal to value i'm going to say print twins found then this is how i'm going to pass the parameters to this the keyword equal to the value of it comma keyword equal to the value of it comma and so on and so forth look i'm not passing a dictionary collection which required it to be a curly brace and uh, uh, and the first one has to be some kind of a lit, uh, num value, etc. I'm passing simply, uh, just like anything else I would pass, simply a key equal to value uh, things here. And inside that, once it comes, I can say I do a short of the keys just to go through it. It does not necessary, but I just, I just did it. Uh, sometimes you may need to do that. And for W in words, which is nothing but keys here, all the keys, that means first word, second word, third word, etc., I am printing the word list square bracket w that means the value of that and if uh, and after that is the match I'm going to set twins found let's take a look how that actually works first word first second word second third word third and third word third here I said twins found because this is uh, the same thing so this is how a named argument works in function in python which is very powerful which is never ever the case you, you don't have anything even remotely similar in uh, in plc uh, thing uh, you may have something like that for like cell scripts and all that thing but not necessarily in 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 plc code so far we talked about functions as if you simply write it we wrote the functions and we executed them. Once I got out of the Python cell, I can see here, I, I got out of Python cell right here, and I'm out. This the, the, the function disappears, which is similar to the PLSQL function definition, like declare function and all that thing. And so that is that the life of that function inside that program only. Outside the program, it doesn't exist. In PLSQL, that sometimes may not be good. You may want to write a function, store it somewhere, so you can call it multiple times. What do you call that function? Well, it's called stored function or a stored procedure, if it is a procedure, and so on and so. What if you want to do the same thing in Python? You want to write it and store it someplace so you can reuse it multiple times instead of rewriting it all the time. Is it possible? Absolutely possible. In Python, it's called a module. It's very sim Actually, modules are not exactly same as stored functions or stored procedures. They are very similar to stored packages in PLSQL. We'll see actually how that actually works. Thing here, um, you can see something like this in PLSQL: create package, my package, procedure, my proc. This is the typical syntax. And uh, we, if you want to call this procedure my proc, you would call my pkg dot my proc. That's how you typically call it. In Python. There's nothing called a database. There's no database connection, so it has to be stored somewhere. So what you do, you simply create a file, and that file could be called some file dot py. That is Python extension py, and you put the functions in that file itself called my func inside that. And once you do that, you call import some file dot py inside inside the Python uh, code. And that's it. Once you import this, it's a very simple thing. It says that that then that uh, the contents of that py file, which is the module, some file is called a module, that becomes visible to the program inside. And then if you want to call this uh, function called my func, you simply call it some file dot my func. 
So this is too much uh, of um, of the of the of the theory here. Let's go and take a look actually in that. I'm going to use idle here because that's what it makes it uh, might be. I'm sorry. I'm going to use the command syntax here. Might might actually make it simple for us to explain that. So first, remember I put all these things together, all this you know, calculate interest and all the things together. I want to pass put that in a single file, and uh, and that file I want to call call int module. So here is how the file looks like. Uh, notepad int module dot py. Oh, this some seems like it's not rendering correctly in Notepad. No worries, I can do a type so you can see that. This is how the int looks like. This is the file int module dot py. Inside that I put this thing called define this function define another function and so on and so forth i also put a variable called v allowed and i set it to true and explain that how the variable is if you look at the package in pl sql exactly same thing you say create package whatever inside that you put procedure is procedure get interest rate is function calculate interest rate and so on and so forth you can also define something called a package variable same thing here called v allowed equal to true once you do this that's all it takes to do uh, to, to, to uh, use this pack, uh, module from this point onwards. And um, let's look at the file. I, I'm actually calling a Python script. Nope. Once again, it's not rendering correctly. I don't know why. So I'm just going to use type. All right, see the first one, import int module. Then I say, I go, go this one, p get new balance, p account type, p old balance, and then I say int module dot calculate interest, p old balance, and account type. Return v int p old balance. If int module is allowed equal to true, here is I am using this package variable, p allowed, if it is true, then I'm printing new balance equal to um, uh, the savings. If it is not true, I'm going to say not allowed to see. So this is a, uh, a very simple example of how I'm using the stored functions or called modules in, in Python and using in my programs as you want. So let's take a look just to see. Let me see I'm doing it as a command line interpreter so in this case. So I'm going to say import int module all right that's one once i say i import a module the functions inside that are visible to me so the what are the functions here get int rate account type so in this case returns the interest rate so let's see um, get um int rate is that it? A, yep get int rate account type equal to say savings uh, made a mistake here okay whoops what did you say get interest rate is not defined well this get interest rate is exactly that isn't it get int rate so why is why is say it's not defined that's because get int rate is not independent it's part of the module so we have to qualify it with the module name itself which is exactly how you would have done in a package as well we had to put package name dot procedure name not just the procedure name directly so int 10 i got that so interest rate savings i can call what if i just checking five what if it is um money market Fifteen and so on and so forth. So I don't have to reinvent the wheel by creating this function every time. I can simply say import module and I get this interest rate. And I got that. So you got this idea how actually that works. I can also so see what the variable value is as well. P allowed is true. I can also specify here. I just like a package variable. I can specify that. I, then once this package variable is set inside this session, if you will, 
it's said to be said false it will keep on doing that so this is how it's very very similar to a package in PLSQL and soon be used differently to do it sometimes there are there are so generally in your real life you'll probably create a lot of modules and a lot of modules will be you'll be calling this lot of modules as well and um, um, so a, when you call import a module the entire module will be loaded into memory just like a package is generally what if you have multiple modules well in in reality you'll probably have multiple modules and you will want to import all of them very simple thing you can simply say import module 1 comma module 2 comma module 3 and so on and so forth you can also put module import module 1 next line import module 2 next line import module 3 you can do that as well all these things where are these modules found so this is the thing so you pay this modules are it has to this this file has to be found in your directory where you are like working on right now or is in the one of the python specified directories wherever the python specified directories are like user defined uh, the, the specifically path uh, python variables are um like the, where you install it uh, python automatically installs some of the modules by default so the the location of that is also fixed so that will be also in the path if you have a specific area where you keep all your modules together all the dot py files together so they can reuse them it's actually really simple to do another variable called python path so python path is a is a path as all the python very uh, modules will be located in if you have a lot of functions inside a module it, you you may not want to load all of them to, to save memory or whatever so you instead of running in the importing a module you will simply say import say a specific one say from int module import say get new balance uh, no so it was a, what is a get int rate get int rate that's it in that case it, it doesn't it not import everything from that uh, module it will in, it get only the get int rate but one of the interesting thing is by doing so you also introduce another good thing uh, or bad thing it depends on how you see it but one good thing is that it does not require you to use those prefix of that interest um, the module anymore so that you can simply say get int rate that's it there's no need to qualify that with the module name if you use the syntax from int module my import get interest so we got excited hey now it's awesome so can I use this for every function in the module absolutely do you have to write down every function like from int module import module function 1 function 2 function 3 etc no you don't have to you can simply say import asterisk it will import everything from that module which is great so while this you don't have to prefix it sometime this one here you don't have to prefix this int uh, get int rate you can call this directly what if you have a function also defined called get int rate which one will take precedence apply your common sense once again the precedence is always local and then global so if you define a local function called get int rate and there is a uh, um, get int rate function in the module as well the local function will take the precedence if you want the module function to be called no worries simply prefix the module name dot that function name to get the result back so while it we do this there are, there are uh, python provides a lot of this predefined modules uh, you saw some of them before like for example print function uh, before as well so one of the functions uh, in modules is let's say math math import math math function all the math function or import statistics uh, statistics etc so it's important it, uh, uh, Python provides all this built-in modules that I can you can call that one question you might ask is that well I do but how do I know what are the different functions or variables inside this uh, module say for example our uh, int module uh, think in module import star how do you know what are the functions defined inside the int module which is something similar to describe a package in plsql or oracle so you can see all these uh, variables and functions and procedures inside that package in 
uh, Python is actually really simple. You can simply say directory int module. It shows you all the things inside that. See the calc int we defined, the get int rate we defined, the v allowed is a variable we defined. In addition to that, it also puts all these things here. All this built in, this underscore, underscore, these are the built in attributes of the function or the, um, or the module. So, what do those things do? So, let's take a look. So, one of the things you can do is say int module dot, let's say this one, underscore, underscore doc, underscore, underscore doc. This is the documentation. We didn't put a documentation at all. That's the reason why it didn't produce anything. We should have done that file is another one that shows you precisely which file it picked up so remember that we saw this import math let's say which file the math programs are math oh sorry this is um, there is not there because this is a uh, module this this uh, math one is not um, it's, it's a built-in thing. It's no, no file here. Um, the package name, specs, etc. All those things are we just defined here. That's uh, the package name uh, and, and the, the module names. You can see that how these things are. Is something called a package here? You might have seen that here. In uh, Python, actually, there's something called a package. Uh, the, it's a little bit different. We'll talk come to the, come to that that one a little bit later on. But don't confuse this one package with the PL SQL package. They're completely different from each other. How these things are uh, put together. Um, if I want to find out what are the different functions are available in the math, I have these things: as sine, cosine, sine, etc. All the math functions. Most likely, you will be doing a lot of statistical analysis. So statistics, it gives you that mean, median, etc. You can see that here. That's the one about the the, uh, the, the functions and modules, etc. Next, we talked about object-oriented programming, which is not very common in PLSQL, but is definitely possible. So you can create an object. So you might have seen that before. Uh, create or replace a type employee as an object. So let's take a look at that. PL SQL, so get PL19. So this is in the creator replace type employee as object, first name, last name, etc. Then I can create a type body in which I put different uh, procedures called member procedures, or also called methods of the type. And then, um, then in that case, I put the code of, of the method of the type, etc. Um, and then once I do all these types, for example, in this member procedure, type body, I can simply put put line, the first name, and I put everything together. This is the display employee is a, is a procedure, and that not, does nothing but simply displays the variable, various attributes of this type. So here is an example of how I use the type. I have created three variables called employee one, employee two, employee three, all of the class or that object called employee. In object terminology, we call that instantiating the class of this. This is another thing, uh, or the type in a Oracle spec. So this is not actually a variable, but this is an instance of the object called employee. So in this case, this instance has the name Martin, King, Tin, etc. Instance number two has this thing called employee, uh, it's called Scott, Tiger, etc. I can when I say employee one dot display emp that time it will it will execute the display emp but only on those uh, those instance so pl19 if I execute it it's going to say type created type body created Martin King and is the first one then it also give employee two dot display emp it gave you give this one Scott Tiger 2030 etc. How do we do the same thing in Python? Actually, there's nothing called create type because Python defines this as a class in Python. But just like PL SQL, it also has attributes, it also has methods. This is the general syntax. Class, you have a class name, 
colon very important colon just like any uh, the, pre the previous definition colon is the end of the name itself so the colon then you put def which is uh, that you know create the function creator script and the member function again colon and this def is indented that means it's a part of the class and not a separate function by itself and then you put the name of, name of the function itself inside the class you can also put uh, attributes if you want to and, and so on and so forth so let's say the same employee thing we saw before how we can see that employee thing in in uh, python so we can do that same one here let's go take a look uh, let me get out of here and I put oh sorry notepad sorry notepad ui 17txt okay here is a class called employee def and that two member functions see this one called underscore underscore init underscore underscore that's a special function member function called a constructor function the special quality of this constructor function is that this function is automatically called whenever you instantiate an object of that class or in other words or in simple English if you're creating a variable whose data type is that particular class called employee that member function that uh, that constructor function underscore underscore init underscore underscore is automatically called if you want to create another variable of the same class it, the same function is called again and again and again all the time automatically the other one is not is called this display emp that's a method function that's a function as well it does something here but it does not get executed automatically you have to actually execute it so let's take a look in this I got employee one is a class of employee and here are the attributes of this class first name last name salary and the department number the second one employee is the first name last name and salary and department number as well display the first employee if you do that is employee one dust display emp the second one is employee two dot display emp, uh, display emp. So let's take a look if this ex I have only execute it what happens there you go very simple thing let me take a type here to show you how it uh, the function is and how that looks like here is the code and when you execute it this is the result of the thing so here we have put the first name last name salary etc let's go through a few things say self dot first name self is indicates to the instance of that class right there the first one so in this case what I'm saying is the first one is self that means the, the default one is a reference to itself then I'm passing all these things then uh, whatever I'm passing I'm putting into the the, the class by right this way so in the when I call this first the function of the class C employee one equal to employee and I put four parameters one two three and four not five but in this in it I have one two three four and five parameters why is that because the self is automatically given you don't have to pass it you don't actually pass it at all you may want to pass it afterwards I will see why but you don't have to pass it this is kind of silent uh, if you will so you will only pass so once you do that you explicitly say self dot first name is first name self dot first name is last name self dot salary or salary and all that thing then in the next one once it is done display emp here I am displaying whatever is inside the self itself and I get that you might ask the question why do you have to put self here isn't that kind of obvious well it's not obvious and we will see why actually a little bit afterwards so you'll we'll see um, uh, what, what is that the what, what is the purpose of that self a little bit afterwards so this is the what we call that instantiating a class and then the, the different objects here um, so uh, remember one thing I, I mentioned to you is that this init or the constructor function is executed every time you create a variable if you will of that class suppose in this case I have called it twice 
So how do you prove it? Well, we can prove it by a simple way. Let's have a variable here. Initialize the variable to zero first. Then every time this function is called, we increment the variable by one. So when you do that, that will tell us. So here is another function. This is the constructor function, first name, self name, etc. See that is called employee dot v employee count. Here I put employee dot employee count equal to this. So I put a v employee count equal to zero. You can see that here. But every time this, the in, inside this constructor function, and see that this employee dot employee count is incremented by one. This is indented with this. So this is part of the constructor function. So here I define two variables. When I do this, it gets executed. It does it. Let's take a look. So control C. I'm going to do this in in this. Oh, sorry, my fault. This is one of the reasons why actually I put it. I put the file and I don't actually type it to make the so that not to make this mistake, but sometimes it does. All right, this is good. Done. This is actually a class employee. All right. Then I'm going to assign two values to it. Actually, let me. I may assign only one value first. First, let me do this. What do you think will happen? Zero, because I did not instantiate this variable yet. Let me instantiate this. None. So if I do this now, the print total employee, the v employee count, it's one. Why? Because this constructor function got executed. Let me do one more time. The same employee. Oh, sorry. And now let me call this employee two. Why? Because I called it second time. What if I call? This employee one on my time as my name is becomes king to emperor something. Employee three. Why is that? Because it doesn't matter actually how many times I what do I do with it. The moment I instantiate this object, this function gets called. As a result of that, the employee count gets increased. So you may want to keep that in mind. If this is the way you want to keep track of employees, not the right thing to do. You may want to have actually count of employees done somewhere because every time somebody uh, calls this employee, now there are only two variables or two instances of this employee. It doesn't matter. It uh, the function got called three times, so the value got increased by three times. So um, uh, so let's go back to the first one again. I think that why do I have self in this? So self in the in the case you can see that here uh, in this I have self display employee which is have a self let me go back to my display employee which is uh, it should be here as well so get uh, what is that called py um 17 the txt yes yes display employee right so here this is the display employee here I put self dot display name, self dot first name, self dot department name, etc. Why self? Isn't that obvious? Because in PLSQL, I didn't do a self. Let me go to see so the PLSQL one. DBS put line, first name, department number, salary, etc. Why do you have to put a self here? It's important to understand the self here. If I do this, if I do the, this omit the self, define so instead of saying self dot first name, so you simply say first name plus last name if I do this how does Python know what does it mean is first name an attribute of this class or is first name a variable you have defined in this function it doesn't know that it's not clear so Python will not be able to parse it so you have to put a self before it to uh, to make absolutely clear to Python this is an attribute of this class that's the important part of it 
So, excuse me, methods are generally a very useful way. This is of this method you can display employees one. It's a very useful way to actually manipulate data in the, in the, in the class itself. Take for example, we will take a, take a very simple example. We want to um, uh, give arrays to employees. And um, we just want to have only, well, we want to create a method called give raise. And in the method, it will give you only one parameter called the raise percent. And this uh, this function will return the new salary. How do we do it? So we have done that already. Let me just do it. We've done that in this case to save some time. Here is self, same thing here, display employee here is a new function, give raise, raise percent. If raise, So here is a simple thing I check. If raise percent is more than 100, I give a runtime error. Cannot give more than 100% raise, which kind of like a self check. If self dot department number equal to 10, then I want to, I, I like the department people from department number 10. I want to give them a raise. 50% more than what what somebody actually used. So in this case, if department number equal to 10, I want to give him a better range. So whatever the raise is at this point, it's um, it says self dot salary equals self dot salary multiplied by one plus actual percent. So I, this is what I want to do. Very good. How do I now and now do this in this case? So this is how I I define the two employees. Obviously, you can see that before. Then display the employee before rage, give the raise of 10%, and display after the employee. Let's see. And let's say that, that that looks like. Actually, let me do this notepad. Let's keep that in the background. Python. So after the raise is. 1050 and uh, all the raise was how much was the raise percent and uh, the raise was in this case 10 percent but because uh, Marty King worked for department number 10 he got 15 percent that's what it comes comes over here what if we had the same situation for somebody not in department number 10 let's take a look a quick example this way This is the problem with <coughs> skipping numbers. Oh. Perfect. This is the class is defined. I define two, um, two instances of this class, employee one, employee two. Good. Then, so employee one, display imp, Marty King 10. If I give Marty employee raise 10%, it gives me on 50. And no, sorry, give rage. Display employee one more time and get 50. Let me give employee two. display Scott Tiger this guy belongs to department number 20 so when we give him a range of 10% it should be only 10% oh, what happened here okay I made a mistake here because mistake is that I did not put give range here so actual range percent Control C, Control V, equal to raise percent. Remove it. Ah, oops, sorry, I made a mistake. So let me just. Uh, edit this file I know it's not the file but I just edit it in this PL SQL return salary and employee ok 
okay so here is something we give it this is the mistake I did earlier so actual raise percent this is it I want to save it and run it here copy got it so if I now um, if I instantiate two employees employee one is Marty employee two is Scott now display employee give raise 10 employee display it got it now employee two display and employee two give raise 10 see that I get only 10% raise only and if I do a display employee I get again the same 200 so you see the idea of how we can define uh, different classes instantiate the different classes and as a result I got back multiple things okay um, so far so good on this one an employee and and uh, you saw the how classes class is a very extensive topic it's kind of difficult to go through every one of them uh, in this case but I think I hope you got an idea of how to define the classes and how to define the methods and as a result of that I'm doing manipulation by the methods uh, classes are not very used a lot uh, our object generated programming is not used a lot during PL SQL so you might not be very familiar with that to begin with but I hope that you got the idea of how to do that in the record in the type um, uh, data type and you do the same thing in Python as we go along you might uh, have more use cases of this uh, once again a, a class is such a wide topic is almost impossible to go through it to find out what's uh, uh, how you go through every possible aspect of the Python of the class um, structure in uh, Python. Hopefully, that's something you pick it up yourself. Let's go to the next one. File I/O. You will have to to, to read a file, write to a file, etc. Because you do any kind of data manipulation in Python. So, so it's important that file I/O. It is something very similar to a UTL file package in PL SQL. You open a file and close a file, etc. But is in Python is actually very simple, very very simple to do that way. So I'll not even go to PLSQL anymore. I'll just go to Python and I'll show you how to do this one here. So let me. Uh, this is the Python uh, script. This is probably easy to show that in uh, in the Python command prompt. So to do that, what when you define a, a file a file, a file here, uh, you can just do this way. File where that's your file where equal to open so here you can say employee dot txt and you can say w plus w plus will say if the file is not open is going to create a file otherwise by some people just w then it not uh, it, it, uh, the file has to exist it opens the file for read write so now this file where is the, like a pointer to the file this is a variable of file type you can manipulate this any way you want take for example you want to write something to the file so you'll say file where dot write so you can say modin space 1000 space 10 and that's for new line character so it, it, it wrote that many this 15 is the number of bytes it wrote to the file so after by by you can also keep on writing a few things anyway and at some point you have to close the file simply say close done if you want to add more lines to this file you have to append to the file not write again open open up so in this case i am going to open it up a so you say open write write more things to this one let's say you want to write scott 2000 etc Scott uh, 2020. There's only 14 characters. Let's close it. Same thing. Let's go here and see this file exists or not. Employee.txt. Yeah, it does. It wrote two files. Let's see more. Let's open the file one more time and append it. And we write something else. Um, give me another one. 
So Albert Einstein. Make his salary 3000 he deserves it and department number equal to 15 suppose all right and close let's see Albert Einstein comes here so this is how you keep on writing to the file if you want to read the file and not actually do any update on the file you can just go here and say instead of a you just put R employer.txt once the file is open and it, read for read, read operation, you can now simply read it. So file var dot read. You can do this way. As you can see, it's not very useful to do this way. Just just read that because uh, it puts everything next to each other. This minus n doesn't help either. So another way to read it is read line. But you can see that oops, I got nothing. I got nothing because when you read the file. It puts the file pointer at the very end of it. That's why when it's read line, it didn't read anything because it's already at the end of the file pointer. So what do you do? So you say file where dot sick. Sick, the first kind of argument is to that is the line number and the next one is the uh, the, the uh, position of it. So sick zero zero. So it goes to zero zero. And let's say read line. It gave me only one result. But wait a second. If you look at the cat employee.txt over here, I got three different records. I got only one record here. That's because read line gives you only one record at a time. If I do it again, give me the second record. If I do it again, I got the third record. If I do it again, I got zero null because there is no other record to be read. So this is like a like a line by line read and very useful, most likely in Python you want to do. So this is an important thing. You can do that in file by line. Okay, so you might see that. Okay, this is good. But then, but you can't. You don't know. You can just keep on typing read line all the time. What if you want to just read as a loop and produce all the results in there? No problem. So first of all, let's just go and sick it to go back to zero zero so that it goes to the point to zero. So this is what you can do. So for suppose say l in file where colon indent it to make sure that we there you go it gives you the results this way one by one so this is one so if you l in file there because l is now a list of all the of the statements over there all the lines over there and that allows you to do it which is a very useful tool typically in, in a file handling procedure one more thing you can probably do is that you can have something called a, a, a JSON, the JavaScript object notation language is a new thing um, getting over the over by storm in the data interchange uh, space. Most uh, um, systems expect the files to come in JSON format. Most systems produce JSON, JSON format. So you can write the JSON format yourself. but Fortunately, Python allows you to do, uh, already has a built-in tool for JSON kind of things. So this is how actually you do JSON. So let's say I have a variable called V equal to, this is how it looks like. So 1, comma, A, comma, Z. I deliberately use three different um, variables or data types over here to show you that I am not constrained by a single data type. So you got V thing. If I do this, it's nothing but a list. We saw that before. Now, what I'm going to do is that I can say another variable called v1 equal to v, uh, sorry, uh, json dot dumps. Uh, v. Sorry, because I have to do something called import json. Import v. Now, if I have a variable v1, I still have this JSON variable called v1. Then I can dump it now in a file. So this is what I do it. JSON, <coughs> excuse me, dump v1, comma, file where. Actually, file where is not writable. So I'm going to open the file to open it for writing. Let's call this uh, file where 
open json dot something like a json dot txt and open this file if it doesn't exist just in the dumps then let's close it to make sure that is close it close it file where and then if I close it let's try to see what's in there type type j uh, employee and sorry json dot txt json dot txt this one now puts these things in the json format which is probably important as well so this is how we can do that for different json type thing one of the things you might want to uh, possibility is that what if the file doesn't exist you might obviously if it doesn't exist you will probably fail so for example here open the file for append employee1.txt well sorry not append uh, let's say reading the file uh, reading the file actually employee2 no such file or directory employee2 it's a bad error you, you don't want to do that so one of the things you can do is uh, remember that try and accept thing <coughs> excuse me so you can do this way try so file where equal to open so same one here employee2.txt is oh, invalid syntax mm, what did I do here open syntax oops my mistake <coughs> excuse me it's gonna happen that way now v line equal to file pair dot read and finally file pair dot close except if is IO error you say V line equal to <coughs> if the file doesn't exist it's just going to simply <coughs> excuse me if it's just simply going to produce nothing but null result instead of producing an error so this is how we can do that by code wise we can also write something more than that for example you can say if the first character of the line is a let's say has character then it's a comment ignore it or if you say if the last one is simply a, 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 a the line, line is equal to zero length equal to zero then the line is the end of the file then stop it <coughs> and so on and so forth so that's the kind of thing you might actually do in uh, using the file operation so at this point let's go and see something interesting let's put it all together let's write a real life program the US Census Department produces a data in many different demographic things for example how many people live there how many people are educated what is the level of education what is the income level and all that which is used by a lot of companies in a lot of uh, decision making processes itself let's take a very simple example from that among many things it produces it also produces the number of high-speed internet access available to the residents of that state and it is the available uh, completely free you can read that <coughs> and I, I put it for your reference here Not bad so I have this called high-speed speed internet access on oh, internet data by state.txt this is a pretty big file it has the state names and how much percentage of this each state high speed access each state has now this is a very valuable data based on that i want to do some manipulation so all the 50 states and the and the state the district of columbia they're all listed here perfect i want to do some manipulations in this and get the data into my program read the file get it into my program and do some manipulations so let's see how I can do that <coughs> excuse me
to show you the program let's go this way notepad py20 oops this is not so let me go to the directory and show you that py20 where is py20 there you go this also shows okay let me show white pad open with word pad perfect all right so let me just show you uh, control a and increase the font size so you can see it perfect so let's go by one by one first file variable open is very clear second file variable sick zero zero actually it's not necessary because this when you open the file it will be a zero zero but i'm just trying to bulletproof the program so that you just do a sick zero zero anyway i does not do it then i because i'll be getting the variables in the in the format state name and the uh, what is the high speed data usage uh, percent at the same time so remember what is that key value pair it's called a dictionary to put everything, I need a first to define an empty dictionary variable. Why do I have to define that? Remember, there's nothing called define a variable. The variable is created when I, it gets assigned for the first time. So it's key value equal to uh, this curly braces. It's an empty dictionary variable. Now I read the file line by line for V line in file where if it is there, these are lines are delimited by tab. So split it on the first on that character. So key dot value. See that v line dot split. Split is a method in that uh, the specific data type the v line and uh, backslash t stands for tab character. So now I got two variables key and value. Those are list uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the the collection variable and split based on the two. Now, what I do is that I define the, the key value 1, that's the dictionary variable I first mentioned. Now, I got my first value. The key comes here and the value is, is that way. And I keep on doing it for all the lines over here. So, once we do all these things, we don't need to give the file anymore. So, we close it, all this file. All right. So, let's, let's just go through it one by one, by one using a Python application. You can see that. So here, control C, and I got close it. Okay. Now, what do you think my key value will have? The key value one, this this variable. What does it have? Let me see. Key value one. It has all this data in this variable. How do I reference it? Simply thing. Key val one Massachusetts. Suppose, oh, sorry, you know why Massachusetts? I'll take my instead. Connecticut. Eighty percent, eighty point five percent, and so on, so on. So, but this is how I do it. If I want to find out all the keys that is available in this key value pair, I have to simply do. <coughs> excuse me dot keys all the keys come here and similarly all the values come here as well well they're not very useful unless you actually specifically ask that so then next we once we do all these things let's we can simply say at for some reason we see get this this minus and this backslash n the new line character at the end of it not very good so we have to strip these things completely Copy. Now, good. So now, <coughs> excuse me. Give value, value, and clean. This is all those things are stripped. All right, let's go back here. So this is not very useful by just simply putting the keys and the values. We need to put them next to each other. So to do that, we can so do this. <coughs> So for v state in key value dot keys, which will give us all the states here, we'll say state high speed use equal to key value one and dot v state. 
So we got this state taxes, high speed internet uses, so on and so forth. So so far we talked about <coughs> excuse me only displaying the data from a variable we got. That's not now all you want to do after we get all this data we have to do some manipulation with this so there are, there are things we want to do uh, thing with the statistical analysis so to do this we need to do import statistics package ah uh, statistics module sorry not package so so once we get that <coughs> excuse me let's say this <coughs> let's say few things we're doing we want to find out few things. We want to see the average data, uh, average percentage across all the states, which is one number. We'll get the min usage and the maximum usage, also just numbers. We also want to find out which state has the minimum usage and which state has the maximum usage. Now, when you define that, keep that in mind is a little problem. Not may, there may be possible that not one state but multiple states may satisfy the min or the max condition. So when you say display the name of the state that has the minimum usage or the maximum usage, we are also be prepared to produce not maybe not one state, but multiple states and multiple names. How do you do that? <coughs> Simple thing to do. So this is what we do. So we cannot just assume that the, <coughs> the value returned will be just one value. It may be a list of values. So to, to do that, <coughs> we have to define this function called get key from a value. So we know how to get value given a key. What do you have to do the reverse, which is given a value, what are the keys for the value, which, which have the values. So this is the, what the function looks like. Let's do this. This is how the function looks like. We, pa we pass the variable value here. Here is the array. Here is the key value dot items, append, and so on and so forth. Then, <coughs> first, let's just put a, a, a separator value. Sorry. So, first, we put a mean usage statistics mean k value and all that thing so mean usage is 74 percent or 0.4 percent usually if we do a maximum also <coughs> excuse me for that we don't need a max <coughs> or the mean we also don't need so minimum so we got the minimum usage 59%, maximum usage 80, sorry, what is that? 82% and mean usage 74%. Next important question is find out which states have the min, max, etc. So we go back to our function over here. Get key value. So we get the get key. So get key within parenthesis. 59.1 Mississippi only one then get us get who has the maximum 82.1 New Hampshire okay let's get who are the average ones <coughs> excuse me nobody because nobody actually satisfies the exact maximum one here is something interesting. So, so in that case, what is the most common use? To have the most common use, we can't just rely on mean because that's mean will give you an average of everything. What we define on is a median. That's different from mean. Median is the exact number in between which actually exists in there, most common usage. So, or, or I'm sorry, not, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, not median. Mode. Mode is the, the, the values which are repeated the most. So, here we do that. So mode statistics mode. The mode is seventy five point five percent. Those are the that value is used a lot. So to do that, who have which states have seventy five point five? 
you got Arizona, Illinois, and Delaware. So this is, so you got this uh, the maximum, minimum, mean, which states have the maximum and minimum, and which states have the most common of these things, which is 75.5. So you can see, we actually have produced a, of a real life program to go through it to tell you how things are, are created by using the file operations. Again, this is intended to simply give you an idea about how to do the file operations. Of course, you can do a lot more based on, on the situations and thing. So the objective is not to go through each and every possible combinations, not, not going to work. So <clears throat> let's go through the summary of, of what you learned today so far. Procedures and function in PLSQL go like this. In Python, the no difference in function and procedures. Uh, a function is simply defined as def, function name, parameter names, etc. and returns some value. There is no difference whatsoever. The default parameter value is in in PLSQL is colon forward slash, I'm sorry, colon equal to. In Python, is simply equal to in this case. But the the big change in Python is that that default value can also be in a variable. Uh, and that's just not possible in PLSQL. <coughs> uh, you can put defined positional variables in, <coughs> uh, in uh, parameters in PLSQL by using equal to forward slash and that as uh, that indicator um, operator in case of uh, Python is simply equal to you can do that in any way any so you can that way you can write the parameters in any order you want if you use the name you can use something called a documentation in uh, Python which is similar to comments but the only difference is that if you put the documentation it stays as a part of the function itself and you can print it by using function name dot underscore underscore doc underscore underscore as a built-in attribute <coughs> the way you do it is three double quotes put your documentation and end with three double quotes something called annotations there is no equivalent in PLSQL which will simply suggestion given to, uh, to the Python that <coughs> what are the data types of the input parameters and the output resolve value again this is nothing but a suggestion only and this is not going to enforce that you must stick to those data types so it uh, usefulness may be limited and you can get that the, what uh, those uh, the, 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 the annotations are by using the function name dot dot annotations on uh, I'm sorry <coughs> function name dot underscore underscore annotations underscore underscore as you see that here global and um, local variables <coughs> global variable is something outside the function and local variable is inside the function if they have the same name then the local variable takes the precedence. Python has the exact same behavior, but two major differences because there's nothing called a declaration of a variable. The first time the variable is assigned, something makes its scope. So if it's inside the function, it is local. If the same variable name is uh, assigned outside the function, it is global. So you be very careful about that one. Second, if there is a variable called v1 outside the function and there is no v1 assigned inside the function, if something references it, Python does not produce an error because it assumes automatically that you are referring to the global variable v1. So that might produce unintended results. So be careful about that and calculate about that one. <clears throat> what if you want to pass unknown number of parameters? That is not possible in PLSQL. You have to know exact number of parameters. In Python, it's very easy to do by using asterisk num list, which expects you to enter any number of um, parameters and it puts everything into a list and once it's a list you can simply iterate over it using for i in num list that way you can go over each one of them uh, stored functions <coughs> if you want to store a function yeah, in uh, pale sql you call create or replace package pkg1 procedure p1 etc and body in python it's called a module just place uh, just create a file with a dot extension dot py and put all the functions in there and when you want to call the functions inside your python code simply call import module name <coughs> and and inside your python code refer to the functions defined inside the module by module name dot function name etc you can also put from module name import p1 comma p2 comma p3 etc that that will that will only import those specific functions and not everything in the module in that case you don't have to prefix it with the module name objects you do create a replace type as object in plsql you simply say class that 
uh, the type name and the attributes of the object and something called um, uh, type body in PL SQL. You can you don't have to do a type body. You can define the same called member functions inside that by using def, just the, the typical thing inside the class. You instantiate the object in PL SQL simply by the, the object name within parenthesis the attribute list. You do the exact same thing in Python as well. The class name within parenthesis the attribute list. When you call a method in uh, PLSQL, you call <coughs> the the type name dot method name, and uh, within uh, parenthesis, the parenthesis, and start parenthesis, end parenthesis, you do exactly same way in Python as well. The the, uh, the attribute and the class name dot not class name, the instance of the class name or the variable name dot the method name, and so on and so forth. File I/O, which is uh, typically stored in UTL file, um, uh, difficult to go through each one of them. But in Python, it's really simple. Open a file, is a file variable. Open, and the file name, and then, uh, and and the next parameter specifies what mode the file should be opened in. If it is W, then we open file for writing. If it is W plus, the file is you know, created if it's, uh, it's not present already. And uh, and if it is R, it opens for read-only operations. Then you say a file variable dot write, and within uh, parenthesis you put a string. It writes to the file. File variable dot close to close open file. File variable dot sick will say you go to specific line number and position number. And read a line. Read line is the one read the entire file. And we uh, uh, in file variable, just if you put for v line in file var, then it will print um, v line. It will go line by line or record by record in there. <coughs> v line is an array, so V line zero will show the first character of the line, and so on and so forth. Now let's uh, see how much you understood it by using a quiz. Let's go through that, that one by one. You can understand that, that quiz one. Okay. So in uh, now that you have gone through all these different scenarios and gone, gone through how to define functions and files and etc. Let's find out how much you actually learned by a few quizzes, just like the previous times. So with the quiz, I'm going to put a little bit different format. I'm going to put on the left side a Python uh, CLI, command line interface. On the left side, I'm putting the real uh, actual com Windows uh, command prompt, where I'm going to show the file and execute the file using Python. Start with the first question. After every question, I'll put a pause. You can pause your screen and uh, then get the answer, and then the answer will be revealed right after that. Question number one is this way. This is a simple Python script, class employee. I have defined the init uh, function, which is the constructor function. We learned that. And in this, uh, this very simple line, employee ID equal to self term employee ID. Then after that, the class is defined. I instantiate one of the class, or we can also say I defined a variable of the class, whatever it is, EMP1. All right, so it sounds very simple enough. Let me run this. Mm -hmm. I got the problem. It says employee object has no attribute called employee ID. Well, I do have an employee ID right here. So how come it's complaining about employee ID? Pause your screen and think about the answer. When you get the answer, please start again. Okay, the answer is actually really simple. Here, look at this construct. Employee ID equal to self-employee ID. You see, self.employee ID is actually the attribute. Employee ID here, Python assumes, because you have defined employee ID like this, it must be a local variable. Remember the variables? You don't actually define the variables beforehand. The variable is created when you actually assign something to the variable right here. So you're assigning the self.employee ID to this variable, emp ID here. That's the reason why it's not going to work. So what you should write is a little bit different. And we'll just write it here to show you on the screen. So class employee is def underscore underscore init underscore underscore self comma emp id so self dot emp id equal to emp id 
that's what you have to do and once you do that then you can say employee 1 equal to employee with the 1 that's it so if I want to display what is the value of employee 1 I can simply say emp1 dot emp id that gives you 1 so that's that uh, the, the first question all right let's go to the second question let me show the second question to here right here this is my second question this sounds very simple I have a same employee class in this case I met your I correct the first problem which is uh, the syntax error I said self dot employee ID equal employee ID which is exactly what is supposed to happen then I give this the first thing we saw here then I also give a dictionary one here and this is another one another value uh, attribute I've defined called department number then I want to print employee ID plus length of dictionary what do you think will be the result and um, please pause the screen and unpause when you get the answer all right let's get the answer what is the what should be the answer instead of actually telling you the answer let me just uh, take this and execute right here I got three why three first of all employee ID here employee dot employee ID what should be return because I assigned one here this one over here employee employee ID returns one the employee one underscore dot underscore underscore dict underscore underscore that's the dictionary attribute of all the attributes we have defined there first I have defined one attribute called employee ID next I find another attribute called department number right here and that makes this two as a result one plus two equal to three let's confirm that so employee ID dot emp ID that's one and employee at one underscore underscore tick underscore underscore that gives me two so the length of this dictionary equal to two so that's what gave me three all right question number three oh question number three is apparently not there all right uh, you want to define a function that doesn't accept any parameters what do you do let's define it here right here so define say print me that's it just to print something doesn't have to be some parameter or something so when you, you want to define the function like this but it gives syntax error why is that pause the screen and ready when you are that you want the answer well the answer is Python expects a parenthesis regardless of a parameter is given or not that's very important to understand that so it's not like uh, uh, functions in so uh, say uh, uh, PLSQL where uh, parameters are optional this is not so even if it doesn't have any parameters then you should just do this way that's it so in this case you can say okay print this is a string or something like that that's it you can do this now print me and this will print it but you have to put a, a parenthesis when you define the function all right question number four I have a very simple function call as well print me I'm in the function line one then I have a print in the function line two etc then I'm going to say print about to call the function then print me then actually after, after calling the function what do you think will be the when you execute the program the output you want is to be in that sequence about to call the function in the function line one in the function line two and after the function right that's the sequence is it correct or not pause the screen and unpause when you're ready for the answer answer is not correct let's see why it's not correct let's actually execute it sorry I didn't copy it properly mm, actually I can just define this q4.txt let's see what happens here in the function line to 
first that one comes then about to call the function comes then in the function line one comes and after calling the function comes well why is that now that answer lies right here how you defined it remember is very important that you must indent the code to be part of the function in this case you have indented this print statement right after the function you did not intend this print statement so when you define this code what happens is python takes this one as the first line of the code and it prints it print in the function line 2 right here then it says print about to call the function that one comes right here then you call the function print me that's where it goes to the def and it says in the function line 1 right here then after the calling a function so keep in mind that indentation plays a very important role in this case we didn't get a syntax error or anything in fact it's correct syntax but the logic is completely different based on how you do the indentation so this is a simple example of that and be very careful about that one question five this is another from uh, let just let me just uh, clear the screen a little bit all right this is the very simple function I have put a call my sum p1 comma p2 p3 equal to 0 inside the function return p3 then p3 equal to p1 plus p2 and about to call the function what's going to happen if I execute this function actually what's going to be important is that um, it's a, uh, what, what is the output of this one pause the screen and unpause when you are ready for the answer Okay, here's the answer. Let's execute it. See what happens. It says about to call the function 1 plus 2 equal to 0. Well, that's obviously wrong. Why is that though? So let's see why is that. Look at what you did here. P P3 equal to 0. That means at this point, the variable called P3 was created. And it was assigned 0 value. Then you put the print inside the function minus sum. It came right here. Then what you did? Return P3. Remember, when you say return something, the function simply executes up to that and then exits. You put P3 equal to P1 plus P2, but not before returning it, after returning it. So this statement will never ever get executed. This is something you have to keep in mind. Syntactically, this is absolutely correct. But logically, it is wrong because you did not assign it correctly. So this is something you have to keep in mind in writing Python functions, how you define this. So this is uh, pretty vital to, to know that this is how you, how you will do it. Question number six. Another one of the same, something very similar. I have put a variable called my var equal to one. Define my function, my variable plus one. And then if I, I put inside my function, my var equal to my var then i increment my var by plus one and then i call my function and then print outside the function my var equal to my var what do you think will be the output of this code will it produce um, in in the function my var i'm putting inside the function pause the screen and unpause when you are ready for the answer Okay, here is the answer. Let me execute it. We'll see the answer right away. It gave local variable my var reference before the assignment. Why did it happen? Look at what you did here. In this case, my var my my var equal to my var plus one right here, which is something you, you put here. But local variable right here in this case is already defined as a global variable so you cannot put this global by local variable here at all so then how do you fix it it's actually really simple so here i have put a 30 xt here if you want to refer to the global uh, the global variable called my var you put here global my var inside that you can put my var equal to my var plus one so in this case you put my var equal to my var plus one you didn't create this variable called my var inside my func. Remember, you don't define a variable. 
a variable is created when you assign something to it. In this case, you didn't assign anything to it. So if you really want to update my var here, you simply say global my var. In that case, oh, this inside this function, it, it understands when you say my var, it actually refers to this my var and not any my var inside this. So let's see if that runs successfully or not. Yeah, it did. This is inside the function and outside the function my var. See, the both values is 3. That's because it's really simple. Because it's both cases, inside and outside, they refer to the same my var uh, variable. So that's, what, that's the reason why it's important to understand that. Okay, question number 7. Let me clear it. I have a very simple function called my max, p1, p2, p3, p4 and print the maximum value is max p1, p2, p3, p4. This is a really simple uh, function that simply returns the maximum value. And I put my list within this test layer. This is a list, 5, 2, 7, 1. And I put my max is my list. Remember that we put this, this we learned about this argument list in, in the earlier test function. But what I did is that instead of defining by the function, as my list here, asterisk my list, I actually called it using a, a, a asterisk. Will, what will be the result if it, it will produce an error? Explain why and where. Pause the screen and unpause when you're ready for the answer. Okay, here is the answer. Actually, let's execute it. See if it uh, produces an error. The maximum value is 7. How come we had the right thing? Now, here is one beauty of, of Python. That argument list we mentioned earlier in the function call definition, it's not limited to only the function call definition. It is limit, It's also applicable when you call the function as well. So in this case, my list is nothing but a list. And my max simply calls this list. And in that case, I have exactly one, two, three, and four values in this list. So the function also expects exactly four parameters, and that time it will be will be fine. So this is a one of the things about Python. You understand that that the data types are not necessarily tied so strongly together, so they can be interchange used interchangeably, unlike PL SQL. So that's what makes the things very really really uh, well. So. That's the reason why. Um, I think. What if you had missed this uh, asterisk over here? This is my list is a list variable. So could that have helped? Let's see. If I do this on in Python, my list, and I would say my func, my max, my list. It said, look at this thing said, it says missing three required positional parameters, P2, P3, P4, and etc. and all that thing. And it, do, it does not, uh, so, so why is that the case then? If you miss this asterisk in the beginning, then Python understands this parameter as just one parameter, which happens to be list parameter. Doesn't have to be anything else. So, but it's still just one parameter. And this function ex expects four parameters. That's the reason why it will produce a result. But if you do this, asterisk, it will be fine because in that case, when it's an asterisk, then you are telling Python, hey, don't interpret it as, as one parameter. Interpret what's in the content of that parameter. All right. What if we change the content a little bit? Let's say we do 5, 2, and 7 only my list. And we do this. What happens here? Because it takes the contents, it will take only 5, 2, and 7. But it's still expecting a fourth parameter, and it's not getting it. That's the reason why it's, it's not, it is, produces error. What if it's a little bit different? We put one more, call five uh, values in this list. Well, it says it requires four, but five were given. That's why you couldn't do it. So hopefully we got, got an idea of how to use the functions and uh, uh, file handling things in, in Python. 
hope you enjoyed it and um, in the next uh, uh, installment of this series we'll talk about using oracle database and python and that's probably the, but the probably the biggest use case you're going to have so hope you enjoyed this and looking forward to seeing you again in the fifth installment